Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps, and I want to give a series on test-driven development. This is something that I've wanted to do for a while, and because I just gave a guest lecture for Lambda School, I thought it would be cool to put this online and show you some of the things that I've been playing around with in terms of unit testing and test-driven development and give you a starting point so that you can get started with this. Now, before I do that, I just want to call out to Lambda School. This is Lambda School. They've got an iOS development track. If you want to learn how to create iPhone apps and you want to do that remotely and you can sign up for this program, this is a, a great place to get started. They've got somewhere around an 80% uh, success rate with students who go through this program getting actual jobs. So if you're looking to change careers, this is a, a really good opportunity to level up your skills learn something technical and get started with app development. So you can read full details at lambdaschool.com. That's L-A-M-B-D-A school.com. All right, so this is not sponsored by them, but I, I thought I would just give them a shout out since I did this guest lecture for them. Let's jump into the lecture materials. Now this is gonna be a multi-video series and I wanna talk about test-driven development and just sort of getting started with the mindset. So what we're gonna be doing is testing time. Now this can be a little bit tricky if you're just getting started and I'm gonna recommend that you go through this material at least one time and then do it again without looking at my solution and just try to follow along, try to write this code. The more you practice, the, the more you're gonna learn. All right, so we're gonna talk about test-driven development. Now, there's really three rules that we want to apply with test-driven development. Our first rule is we wanna have a failing test before we write any production code. So we want to make sure that we're writing sort of the logic of how we wanna use something before we actually implement it. This helps us think through how we wanna use it and it can improve the API design and things like that. So that's a, a first thing. So we wanna write the test before we write the actual code. It's also a lot more motivating when you write the test first and then you have to get that to pass. Then we're gonna write enough so that the, the test is going to fail. So it might initially fail to compile. We're gonna write enough to make it so that the test actually fails. We want to be able to go from a failing test to a passing test. And we wanna verify that we're actually writing the code and we're only writing enough production code to make it pass. So you're not gonna write some fancy algorithm all the way through, you're gonna write one piece at a time that's testing sort of the business rules or, or logic that you need to actually make it work. And you're gonna go through that process. So these are the three rules that we want to try and follow. This takes us through the red green refactor loop. And so the red is when we're creating our failing test. And this is either the test fails to compile or the the test is failing because the assertion, the, the thing that you're trying to test, the condition doesn't actually work. Green is where we actually write the production code. This is where we're trying to make the test pass. Remember, we're only trying to write as little as possible and you'll see that in this demo. And then our last step is to refactor. This is where we clean up the code that we've written. We clean up and reorganize things, move things around, get rid of redundant code. We're gonna wanna follow the dry principle where you don't, repeat yourself. So that's dry, don't repeat yourself. All right, so now the format that I'm gonna take for this is we're gonna follow the arrange act assert. Now this is a sample test that we can sort of see the flow and it's nice to sort of space this out with space. So I've written it this way. Typically you won't have the arrange act assert comments in there, but this is just so that you can sort of put your your mindset around it and sort of understand what we're doing. So arrange will have all of the values at the very top that we need to act on. We've got our expected value sometimes. Act is where we're gonna call a, a method or an API, something that's gonna do a little bit of logic. This is the thing that we actually wanna test. Now, we're not necessarily testing every single method in our class, we're testing the actual outcomes, what the user would see, what's the final result. So this might be your entire parse uh, JSON request or something like that. Assert is where we test our expected value against the actual value that we get back. And ideally, this would fail. Now, this one's going to pass because uh, 20 plus 40 is equal to 60. But if you're calling your stuff, you'd initially want to, to make this fail and, and then make sure that it passes. And that just gives you verification that it didn't just work magically 
uh, as you're going. So that's arrange act assert. Now for this, I want to have a little project that we can work on. And in super easy timer, I wanted a trial period. So I extracted some of the concepts and we're going to be going over that. Super easy timer is the timer that I use for just keeping track of my productivity. So it's this resizable timer. I can start it, stop it. And I wanted to have a trial period so that people could try the app before actually purchasing it. All right, so we're gonna learn how to build something like that. This is the logic that powers that type of scenario. And so in terms of design, when we're talking about test-driven development, we don't just magically come up with design. This is something that we have to sit down and think about. So I've already done sort of the thinking work for where I wanna start, but you're welcome to take this wherever you go. Throughout this video series, we're gonna cover four of the, the scenarios here. We've got the date installed, the duration in days, the date expired and is expired. And it's up to you to implement the reset trial using the method that we go through in this series. So that's gonna help you understand how to go about the process. What I want you to do, sit back and watch, see what I do and try and figure out what's going on, then follow along and then try this again without watching. The more you practice, the better you're going to be. And then at the end, I'll share some of the resources that you can use to continue to practice this type of thing. Now, this exercise is what we would call a code kata. This allows you to just try something over and over again until it sort of makes sense, until it becomes comfortable, until it just becomes second nature. All right, so let's dive into Xcode. I wanna explain one or two things. So I've got the testing project, and this is actually on GitHub, so you can jump on over if we go back here to github.com slash paulsolt slash testing time starter. That's going to be the starting place, but I'm also going to have a branch that's going to have the, the final version. So we've got the starting place. You can just clone or download this. You can download the zip to get started so that you can start with the sample code. In here, you're going to have the readme, which covers some additional details that I've talked about, as well as some resources, which I will also link underneath this video. And then it's also got the lesson plan. So if you want to follow along and sort of jump ahead, you can jump into the lesson plan. And it's kind of got my notes that I'm going through as I'm implementing this so that you can sort of use that for reference if you need to go back to a step or if you need to redo something. All right, so that's our starting place. And let me just pull this up along with the simulator so we can see sort of what is the scenario that we're trying to do. So we want to have a, an app that we can just start up. And then after a period of time, we wanna say that the trial period expires. And so you could have a little pop-up like this, or you could have a fancy sort of snazzy thing that it just sort of modally pops up on the screen and just tells them what they get when they upgrade and, and when it's expiring. So in this case, this just tells me that it expires today. Um, I've just got some simple logic in our view controller. I've commented out the actual production code because that's not working yet. We're going to implement that. Um, but this is sort of the, the starting place. And so right now it's showing a trial dialogue with the expiration, which just shows this little dialogue. So if I hit OK, then you can use the app. If this was expired, then you'd probably want to limit the features that they could use in the application. All right, so that's sort of the mindset of why we would want to do something like this. Now we wanna learn how can we write this code so that we know that it does expire when the, the duration is expired, okay? So let's jump into the, the Xcode project and get started with that.